In this video, we are going to be exploring communicating expectations when you are working with clients, particularly one on one. In case you don't know me, I am Mariah. My business is Bloom Hustle Grow, where I help service based entrepreneurs get their business operations organized and optimized to make the hustle happier. So let's dive in. When working with clients as a one on one business, it's really important to clearly communicate expectations with your clients. I'm going to just go through a few pieces I think are vital information that you should be communicating with your clients from day one, from your very first appointment with them. Of course, depending on what you're offering in your unique business, there may be more that you need to add in here. So it's going to depend on your processes in your business and what you're offering. But these are some basic ones that I find a lot of businesses need to make sure they're communicating clearly. First of all, a lot of times when people work one-on-one -on -one with somebody, they're going to be meeting with that person. It's really important to communicate how you're going to be meeting with that person from discovery call, through your first pay call, through review sessions, whatnot. So you wanna make sure that it's clear here is a video phone in person. What is the expectation there? Then your office hours and or turnaround for communications. So if they send an email, what is the expected turnaround for you to reply to that email? Or what are your normal office hours? Just communicating things about like when you're working, when your office hours are, and what your turnaround for communications are. Timeline for canceling appointments or rescheduling appointments. I personally would not want to be running a business where a client can easily cancel two hours before we're supposed to have our meeting, particularly if it's something that you really have to spend a lot of time prepping for and you want to do it right before you meet. Do they need to give you 24 hours advance notice? Do they need to give you eight hours advance notice? You know, what is your cancellation policy and what's your rescheduling policy? Like how, how much time do they need to tell you to reschedule that appointment? And then also what happens if they don't meet that expectation? And just because you have these boundaries in place doesn't mean you can't have flexibility. If you truly know that a client had an emergency with with their child. It's okay that you have a policy of 24 hour cancellation and then you bend that policy because you know as a true emergency. What you don't want to get into a situation is where somebody's constantly having those problems and you're like, I don't know if this is a real problem or if you just don't have your shit together. You want policies in place where you don't have to work with somebody who's constantly not respecting your boundaries and what you need out of your business to serve your other clients as well. What happens if they are late to an appointment? Are you going to start an appointment 30 minutes late or do they need to reschedule? Will they be charged for that appointment? Things like that. What happens if they miss an appointment with you? You can have a cancellation policy, but then what if they don't even tell you they're not coming? What if you're sitting on the call waiting for them to show up and they don't show up? What happens? What are the repercussions there? What happens if you miss an appointment with them, right? So like you have an emergency, sometimes it's really nice if they know, okay, you have these expectations from me as a client. What are my expectations? for you as the service provider. And again, everybody has emergencies and stuff, but it's just important to like let people know what your process is if something happens. What are acceptable channels of communication? If you do have a policy of like, you need to let me know in X amount of time to cancel your appointment or reschedule appointment, what channel are they supposed to communicate that from? What channels are appropriate for them to communicate with you on? You don't need your clients contacting you through Instagram DM, Facebook Messenger, and email. You should have channels that you've established that this is our primary channel of communication. I don't want you messaging me on Facebook randomly because I don't check my Facebook. And timelines. So if you have a multi-step process with a client that you're that's your delivery. It's like, okay, first we do branding, then we do the website or whatever. And it's, it's a delivery that has a lot of steps. What's your timeline for this particular project? What can they expect in terms of like when they'll work on things? And also what is the expectation of them? Once you get them something that you might need review or feedback on, what's your expectation? Because you can't just let people hold something for months and weeks or whatever, especially if you're to manage multiple clients. What is the expectation of review? And feedback. If you have where you need review from people, how many reviews do they get? How is it supposed to be communicated? Stuff like that. You really want to take these kinds of things into consideration. What do they need to know? 
to make sure that you guys have a smooth working relationship, right? Even if things seem like very basic or common sense, it's still really important to communicate them. Some key places that you may communicate some of these points, contracts and legal documents, anything that you basically need as a sticking point to whatever your service is should be in your contract and your legal documents. If you miss an appointment, you have to pay for that appointment, then that should be somewhere in your contract. It should be somewhere in your contract about those like turnarounds, reviews are expected within two weeks. If they don't get it, you have a late fee or you have something. So anything with consequences and anything you may want to make sure that you have that legal backup should be in your contract. I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not telling you exactly what's in your contract, but just make sure that any key points about your working relationship and repercussions about like, if they don't do this, this happens, or if you don't do this, this happens are within your contract. Confirmation emails. So this is purchased or appointments. Usually most people, if they book an appointment, they'll get a confirmation email. If your first point of contact is more of a purchase type situation, then still they get a confirmation email. So you want to like make some of the key points and your next step in working with you in those confirmation emails. If it's more of a passive product, then just make sure you're communicating clearly in the confirmation emails where they can find whatever they purchase. In that confirmation email, make sure you're outlining next steps and expectation. Appointment reminder. So this is a good place to say, hey, if you don't let me know you need to cancel appointment or reschedule, this is what's going to happen. Make sure you're clearly communicating these types of reminder emails. Where are you meeting? It always is good to repeat information to clients more than one time. Most people don't actually read the contracts. People should be reading their contracts closely, but let's be honest, a lot of people just skim through it. So anything that really needs to be reiterated that's important for your working relationship should be in like confirmation emails and reminder emails. If you have a multi-layered service like designing a website for somebody or doing a branding package for somebody, something that where you have an ongoing working relationship, you may consider creating like a welcome packet or onboarding doc that really highlights some of these key expectations that you need from your clients. Email fitter is a great one, especially for like those office hours or what your turnaround time is. Automating messaging can be a great way to remind people, okay, it takes me 24 hours to reply to your email. Or if you're not using Facebook Messenger, but you have clients that keep popping up there or even potential clients, maybe put in an automated message there saying, hey, I don't really check this space. This is how you get in touch with me. And then ongoing communication. If you have a multi-layer process or you're working with somebody over a timeline, you need to remind them of some of these things. Like every time we would send a portion of the project, this is step one. It needs to be reviewed by X, Y, and Z date. If you don't review it, it pushes back the project by X, Y, Z. We would also remind them, hey, once we get this step done, this is the next step. This is what to expect. This is when to expect it, stuff like that. So as you're working with somebody, you make sure to keep communicating what the next steps are. And then you always want to be improving your communications as you take on clients. You want to look for common questions for clients. So if you keep getting asked, hey, where do we meet? Or where the Zoom link, that kind of stuff, go ahead and put it in those confirmation emails, in those reminder emails. Anything that you keep getting from clients over and over again, you may consider adding into how you're communicating with them and bolding it and just reminding them of it. Frustration points for you. So are clients usually showing up late? How can you fix that? How can you better communicate how that impacts you and your process and your business? Or if clients are not reviewing things on time, you put in things like those late fees or like that delay fee. Also frustration points for clients. Are they frustrated about, I sent you an email and you didn't reply right away. This is where those policies like, hey, it takes us up to 24 hours hours to reply. Just communicating stuff to people can alleviate a lot of frustration because if they don't understand your process or understand your timelines, they get frustrated because they don't know when to expect things from you. It's just important to always be looking at how you can optimize your process and your work with your clients. And of course, it's easier to improve your processes if you have your processes documented and if you're following the same process with almost every client. Even if your deliverables are a little different, you should have a very solid 
client process. You shouldn't be reinventing the wheel every time. And that is really an important part of your offers operations is having templates and having set processes and having set steps that you take with every single client. The key piece is having all of this organized as well as documented and structured in a way that you can be improving on the different steps. And if you want to learn more about how to get your operations organized, I highly recommend my free masterclass from Hot Mess Express to Smooth Operations, the seven essentials of business operations you need to know. I give you a framework that helps you simplify your approach to business operations and getting them organized just because business operations are all the things you do in your business. So sometimes it's overwhelming for people to start organizing that, approaching their operations in an intentional or structured way. So that framework is just to help you get a jump start on better organizing how you're running your business.